between the central incisors. But that is an example of a class two defect that was constructed with hard tissue instead of soft tissue. The class three, the most challenging, especially when it gets to multiple tooth segments, involves the buccolingual and apical coronal tissue loss that results in a loss of normal height and width, and we must deal with oftentimes through multiple procedures to completely reconstruct the defect. A case here where the restorative dentist had advised towards the extraction of the canine um, because they didn't believe that root coverage was a good indication here. You'll see with, by marking the pre-existing restorative margins, recontouring those once a surgical flap is laid, placing a connective tissue graft and an interpositional graft, currently advancing our soft tissues and supporting things the best we can with our provisional restoration and ending up with a post-operative result that has dealt both with the horizontal and chronoapical defect through soft tissue augmentation. Going on to the point of final tooth preparation and delivery of a final restoration that's highly aesthetic for the patient considering where they started. And like my partner so many times said, we're not building pockets here. We have a nice connected tissue attachment to the root surface that is difficult to probe. The class three alveolar ridge deficiency uh, with a two tooth span is handled much in the same way with primarily dealing with the horizontal ridge deficiency with connective tissue and secondarily coming back once we have handled the buccal ridge deficiency, dealing with the vertical component with a soft tissue only graft, using our provisional to support the soft tissues and moving on towards a final fixed partial denture that still needs maturation, but we're in a situation where we've drastically improved the site by performing root coverage procedure on the canine, horizontal and vertical soft tissue augmentation in the ponic sites. A devastating case. This case presented from a endodontic failure. Actually, material had leaked from the rubber dam, causing hardened soft tissue necrosis and the loss of the central incisor. So once the tooth is removed, we're dealt with a class three ridge defect that needs to be dealt with. Um, this patient had no interest in a dental implant in this site, nor for the extraction of the lateral incisor that is significantly compromised. We'll tackle this first with the horizontal ridge augmentation to recoup proper ridge width. Then secondarily, with an onlay procedure of soft tissue, modifying the ponic appropriately to not put too much pressure on our soft tissue graft. Here we are at, I believe, two weeks, one week, two weeks from the coronal aspect. At two months, we've had some significant shrinkage. We'll do a second soft tissue augmentation. There's actually a duplicate slide in there, I apologize. This is after the second soft tissue augmentation. And going from there to there with a pleasing aesthetic result in the resolution of the majority of our severe alveolar ridge deficiency. In long-term follow-up on a case like this, showing soft tissue stability around the pontic. Another case that presents to us not only with the alveolar ridge deficiency, but a tooth length discrepancy on one of the pontics. This will be handled in a similar way where the, the, it will be asked of the restorative dentist to prepare these teeth to ideal tooth lengths to allow for root coverage on the previously restored tooth, root preparation, connective tissue graft on the abutment tooth and a soft tissue ridge augmentation in the ponic space. This is after the first surgery and after healing of the first surgery. We'll now secondarily do a pedicle graft into the papillary area with connective tissue, modify our provisional restoration 
and now we can develop our ovaponic site for the delivery of a final fixed partial denture that gives the illusion of natural teeth emerging from the soft tissues and a before and after. Another defect with significant uh, recession on the ponics as well as a class 3 alveolar ridge deficiency and approximately be handled with a connective tissue graft and interpositional graft at day one at four weeks and we've developed root coverage here and on this view you can better appreciate the site developed in the canine area from a ridge deficiency to an ovaponic. Multiple tooth class 3 which we can't appreciate so much right here because of the ridge lap restoration. From profile you can see that these are significantly draped over the alveolus and once we provisionalize we can appreciate the sizable alveolar ridge defect um, that is a combined lesion, meaning this is not just hard, not just soft tissue loss, but significant underlying hard tissue loss. You can see from the occlusal profile our ridge deficiency, we're using bilater bilateral combination inlay, uh, onlay grafts, suturing where the epithelial part is slightly exposed in that region, and this is after healing from our first soft tissue graft, then coming back with a new provisional restoration, developing ovaponics. Not just the ovaponic preparation that I had showed before, but a small incision made, scalloped incision made to allow for significant insertion of our ponics into the soft tissue and further push the soft tissues to the buckle to improve, improve our profile. Here we're adjusting and inserting the removable provisional restoration and allowing her to heal. And we can appreciate the soft tissue profile we've developed before and after and we've got a, a happy patient, although I would argue in being critical that by using some pink porcelain or approximately we could have optimized it Fortunately, in her case, her smile line was below that juncture, and she's most happy with the fact that she doesn't have the rib, ridge lap type restoration. I will finish with a defect that I believe is hard to manage without pink porcelain. I know you, most of us have heard Dr. Salama talk about planning for pink porcelain. Uh, I have taken from that on defects like this, where we plan from the onset with the restorative dentist, with the dental laboratory, and most certainly with the patient for pink porcelain instead of uh, a oversized teeth uh, or an island prosthesis. So you can appreciate here the soft tissue loss, hard tissue loss in a chronoapical dimension as well as a buccolingual dimension. Aveolar ridge measuring about three and a half millimeters. Bone augmentation procedures were performed, allowing for the placement of dental implants. And ultimately restored with a prosthesis that incorporated pink porcelain to diminish the amount of soft tissue loss that would have been very difficult to recoup completely with our surgical procedures. In summary of the aesthetic aveolar ridge defect, we must perform adequate risk assessment to avoid our aesthetic complications, thoroughly understand the expectations of the restorative dentist and the patient, understand the defect classifications and our, our uh, treatment options available to reconstruct the ridge deficiency, success with, in, in, in these cases, success with connective tissue, with years of evidence for long-term stability, and we'll finish with this where I'll read this for you. A smile costs nothing but gives so much. It enriches those who receive without making poor those who give. It takes but a moment but the memory of it sometimes lasts forever. Nothing is so rich or mighty that he can get along without it. And none is so poor but that he can be made rich by it. A smile creates happiness in the home, fosters goodwill in the business, and is a countersign of friendship. It brings rest to the weary, cheer to the discouraged, 
sunshine to the sad, and is nature's best antidote for trouble. Yet it cannot be bought, begged, borrowed, or stolen, for it is something that is of no value to anyone until it is given away. Some people are too tired to give you a smile, give them one of yours, as none needs a smile so much as he who has no more to give. I thank you for the attention, and I'll be happy to address any questions. That concludes this program. This material was recorded and produced by Mobile Tape Company Incorporated of Valencia, California. More information about other available media may be obtained by calling 1-800-369-5718 or on our website, mobiletape.com.